This is gonna be the very best video for color management in Fusion. I'll show you exactly what you need to know so that your colors in Fusion match the colors on the color page and you can stop worrying about all that malarkey. <laughs> And even if you have no idea about color management, it's gonna be so easy. And if you want some footage to play around with doing color and editing and everything, we have some footage available right up there. It's ungraded, it's a whole sequence, it's unedited. You can edit it together into whatever video you want. Do some compositing like we're doing today, do some color correction, and it's just for you to practice with and enjoy. There's also a link for that in the description. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty here, if you already know about color management and you're just looking for the settings, if you just want the right settings, why do you ask questions which you already know the answers? I'm gonna save you watching the rest of the video. Here we have this comp where we have kind of this bright sRGB screen over this log footage, and I want to do some color management. I just go down to the settings cog right here, and then here under project settings, under color management, Switch this color science here to YRGB color managed. Turn off automatic color management. Switch this to HDR DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. Switch this to custom. I would turn off the input DRT and take the timeline working luminance to 10,000 nits and turn off white point adaptation. If you're looking for the answer, this is the sauce. When I do this and hit save, my colors are gonna look good. It's gonna manage my log footage if it is raw. And if it's not raw, all I have to do is go to the media pool, right click on my footage and select input color space, whatever input color space I want. This one is Blackmagic Design, Blackmagic Design Film Gen 5. And in Resolve 19, doesn't work in 18, just 19, the footage is gonna look the same in the edit page, the fusion page, and the color page. Now, if you don't know a lot about color correction or you just wanna understand this a little better, here's the long version. Well, real simply, we have this footage. This is shot in log on the Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K, and it looks kind of gray and washed out. And then when you go into the color page, it looks gray and washed out. And so what a lot of people will do is come down here to these color wheels and start messing around with things like contrast and saturation and kind of playing with this until it looks like a nice image. But that's wrong. Not this time. Wrong. You're wrong. Not this time. Don't do that. And there's two major reasons for that. The first reason is when you come down here and you're playing willy nilly with all of these controls and moving them back and forth, you're putting your creative intent into just correcting the image. And so if you're looking at an image and you go, you know, it should really be a little bit brighter like this and it really should be a little bit darker like this and we should have about this much saturation and we should have this much contrast, you might end up with an image that looks good. But you're going to have to do basically that same thing with every single shot in your sequence and you're very likely not going to create an image with these things that looks like the image was intended to when whoever shot this footage shot it. Chances are you're going to make it a little bit too bright or a little bit too dark, or you're putting a little bit cooler temperature in there. You're making the colors more or less saturated than was intended, which if you shot this footage, I guess, I guess you could do that, but you're essentially doing the same work that you already were supposed to do when you shot this, namely exposing it right, controlling the colors and the lighting and everything. You're kind of doing all of that work again in post. No, no, no. Hell no. One, it's more work. And two, it adds your creativity into it. And who cares if you're adding your creativity into it? Well, the whole correcting of an image doesn't really need to be a creative thing. It's more of a technical thing. Because what your camera is doing is let's say it sees an image like this. Your camera is squishing all of the data into a video signal that it can and it makes an image like this. And the way that it squishes all of that data in is with math. And so when you take a log image from a camera like this and you grab the gain and you start pushing it around, what you're doing is guessing on the math, which might look good, but it's not going to give you the starting point that was really intended when your camera kind of converted it to this log footage. So when you manually color correct, you're doing a bunch of work that you don't need to do, and you're not even doing that great of a job. <laughs> so the alternative to all of this is color management. And the idea is that your camera does some fancy math and it makes your footage, and then color management does kind of like reverse math, and it makes a beautiful image. It, it's, it's, it's just, I mean. So how do we use color management? Well, there's basically two ways to do it in Resolve. 
Here's the easy way. Go down to the lower right hand corner, right there, and click on this settings cog. That'll bring up your project settings. And here in this menu, click on color management. And here where it says color science DaVinci YRGB, we're gonna twirl this down and go down to DaVinci YRGB color managed. Click on that like this. And right now you're in color managed mode. And for a lot of stuff, this will probably work just fine. In fact, if I hit save, look at that. My colors are correct. So this should look pretty darn close to how it looked when you shot it on the day you shot it. So you don't have to deal with the gray washed out footage anymore. It's just beautiful. Now, the reason why this automatically worked is because the footage I'm using is Blackmagic RAW. Now, it's not just because it's black magic, it's because it's raw and there's metadata inside of the footage that you're using that Resolve can read. And so it goes in there and it does some detective work and figures out what camera you shot with and what color space you shot with. So if it's black magic, it's probably black magic design film Gen 5, Gen 4, Gen 3, something like that. If it's Sony, it might be S log 2 or S log 3. For Canon, it might be C log. If you have raw footage, Resolve will figure out how to treat the colors right. Smart. If you don't have raw footage, for instance, this shot, which is the same shot, but it's just converted into a regular video file. This is just a MOV. This, it doesn't have the raw data, and so it has no idea what camera this is. This could be absolutely anything in the world. So what we can do is go to the media pool and right click on the footage and go down to where it says input color space. Here, you can choose what camera you used and what color space you used. So here, I'm gonna choose Blackmagic Design, and we did Film Gen 5, just like that. And now, hey baby, it's looking great. Notice I didn't do anything creative there. All that was was just telling it what camera I shot with, and then it gives me a nice looking image. Now, this image that it makes, is it going to be beautiful? It depends on how you shot it and how you lit it. If in camera, everything is dialed in beautifully, it's going to look pretty good. This isn't a replacement for the tools in the color page. This is kind of like the first step to get you into the ballpark of what your image should look like. Then you can do some fancier things like increasing the contrast, warming it up, cooling it down, that kind of thing. But at that point, it's a creative choice instead of a technical choice. And anything that you do here in the color page, any nodes that you add and everything is gonna be adjusting this image under that color management, which means that I can access the full quality of this image and all of the color information and everything. But at the end, after I do everything in the nodes here in the color page, after I do all of my creative color stuff, then it's going to convert that all to look good on my screen, just like this. All the little gizmos inside turned on. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. We get to take advantage of the super high quality log footage where we have a lot of room to play around with color grading, but we get to do that in a way that's kind of already done the technical work for us. Okay, so that's an overview of color management and kind of how that works. Now, when we're working with composites and we want to say replace this screen, color management becomes really important when we're working in Fusion. In Resolve 18, this was uh, not working very well, but in Resolve 19, color management works really well with Fusion. The first thing you'll see is that this image that I'm looking at, this is a color managed image. I haven't done anything to the footage here in the Fusion page, and I haven't even done anything to it in the color page. But look, the color page viewer and the Fusion viewer both show me the exact same colors, which you might think, duh, but it's really important that you'll be able to see the basic color management when you're working with composites. For instance, if I want to add a phone screen onto here, I can drag this in and position this on the corners. And here, this comp looks pretty good. If I go over to my color page, it matches. It's great. But if I did this without color management on, check this out. Go back to my color management and switch it back to YRGB like this and hit save. Look what happens. We have this nasty gray footage and then this bright screen. And at this point, it would be really, really hard to figure out what this, is, what this will actually look like when we color correct it. Because if I were to do my you know, normal color correction thing here, 
do my contrast and saturation and everything and do this, that screen is not going to look right. And when I switch back over to Fusion, it's not, I'm not going to see my color correction at all because Fusion always opens up the footage before it gets to the color page. And so it becomes kind of a problem. And even if we were to do something like add some color correction to our screen and then kind of desaturate it, you know, and then kind of take the gain down and bring the lift up and desaturate it and that kind of thing, we could kind of make this match here, but then we're kind of guessing and we go over to the color page and we're like, oh, okay. I mean, it looks, it looks okay. It's not great. <laughs> and then we'd have to kind of switch back and forth to try and get this to match. We could export a LUT from this. We could, you know, right click and say, generate LUT, just say 65 point cube, put it on the desktop. And we could go over here to our fusion page. And here in the upper right hand corner, we could go to edit and find a LUT file and find that LUT that we made like this. And that would give us a pretty good estimation of what it's going to look like. And so switching in between these, that would be uh, probably the next best thing because that you can get it to match that way. So I guess you could do that, but you'd have to do that with every shot <laughs> and it would be so much work. Again, for something that should be technical, not creative. We are having to make really ridiculous choices. So instead of doing all of that, what we do is we work color managed, save. Let's take this LUT off and get rid of this brightness and contrast. And now these images are still gonna match and I can make some informed decisions on exactly how I want to treat this image so that it actually matches and looks good. Now, if you're going to be doing some fusion work, here's exactly what I think you should do. Go down to your project settings and make sure to set this color science to DaVinci YRGB color managed. One thing I'll do is uncheck automatic color management here where it says color processing mode, switch this to DaVinci wide gamut intermediate, and then go down and hit custom. What that's going to do is set all of these settings. And then when you say custom, it's actually going to show you what it's setting and what it's doing. And these settings for most things are probably going to be just fine. And so if you're a little bit scared of color management, I would try it like this DaVinci YRGB color managed, uncheck automatic color management and switch this to HDR DaVinci wide gamut intermediate hit save. And now we have our colors matching between our fusion and our color page. And it's looking beautiful. Now, if you're just looking to get started, just stop there. Thanks for watching. Make sure to download this footage. There's a link in the description. Have a good day. But if you want to get just a touch deeper, yes, let's check these settings real quick. I'll go to our settings cog and then that opens our project settings. Now here we are in color management. If we switch this to DaVinci YRGB color managed and go to HDR DaVinci wide gamut intermediate and then go to custom, this will show all of the settings that that setting uses. Input color space. This isn't really that important because you're going to set things kind of individually to whatever they are. The timeline color space is pretty important, especially if you're working with fusion. That's the color space that it's going to set everything to in Fusion, and it's going to be kind of like it's working color space. So you definitely want to set that to DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate. The timeline working luminance, it's probably a little safer to set this to custom and then 10,000 nits. The only time this is going to be not maybe the best is when you're converting something that's sRGB or Rec. 709. Things will probably end up looking a little bit dark, which you can fix. That's not that big of a deal something to notice in all other circumstances it's probably better to keep this at 10,000 nits output color space can be rec 709 that sounds good limit output gamut to color space that's fine input drt i would recommend turning this off this is also going to change the way like this screen looks but it's going to mess with most of the colors less which i think is probably a good idea output drt you could probably leave as davinci you could also go to luminance mapping I like both of those. I would uncheck use white point adaptation unless you're sure that you want to change your white point and everything else is probably just fine. When I hit save, that's gonna change this a little bit because I disabled the input mapping, but I can adjust that and color correct that and stuff. Everything else is going to be just about the best quality you can get as far as color management inside of Fusion.
So yeah, these are the settings that I've been using and I think they work really well. Make sure to check the comments in case somebody who's really smart decides to uh, correct me on this, but you could roll with this and I think you'd be just fine. And in DaVinci Resolve 19, I think this is really the best way to do your color management. Hey, if you need stuff to practice color managing, well, we have the whole project for this uh, coffee video right here. You can download it. You could do some compositing, some color managing. You know what I'm saying? All right. You could even watch the big old tutorial and follow along right there. Okay. Thanks for stopping by.